Many people, including Sam Altman, are betting that the first one person, one billion dollar startup is very near. But will it really just be one person? No, it'll be one person managing teams and teams of AI assistants automating every aspect of their business. Today, I wanna to show you how to dramatically level up your AI team by creating AI assistants that use Claude connectors. These Claude connectors can now interact with tons of powerful tools without the hassle of setting up an MCP server. I want to show you what works, what doesn't work, and even how to get these tools to automatically improve themselves. Let's dive right in. If you go to Claude.ai, you're going to see something like this, and all of your connectors are right here in this little uh, slider button. You've got your web search, your drive, Google Drive search, Gmail search, calendar search, and a couple here that I've been experimenting with, this Notion and Canva. You can add more here. Here's a list of all of the different connectors that work with the web version of Claude AI. And those include a lot of project management tools, uh, as well as all of the ones we've gone through. Intercom, InVideo is a way to turn ideas into videos. There's a lot of payment things here. Zapier, of course, very powerful. And then we get into the desktop extensions. So for these, you would need the desktop app of Claude to access these different um, tools, such as a PDF filler, a way to control your Mac, which is really cool, Spotify. There's some overlap with the other ones, Airtable. And basically what these are, are these MCP servers. You can see here, it says MCP server. Previously, you had to jump through a bunch of steps. I've done it in previous videos that, uh, you know, you have to walk through to get these servers set up, but now you can do all of this with just a click or two, and I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a second. Let me show you how easy it is to install one of these. I've gone ahead and uninstalled uh, my Notion, but I'm just clicking into here, and I'm gonna find Notion. I'm gonna click this Connect button. It's opening my Notion. I click Continue. And there you have it, successfully connected to Notion. So that's much easier than setting up that MCP server if you remember that process. And a lot of these are even easier than that. These are just little sliders that you can turn on and off for all of the G Suite functionality along with the web search. And now clicking into this, now that we've connected Notion, you see this little number 13, you can click in and this gives you a good feel for all of the different things you're able to do with a specific connection. So these are very similar to API calls, different things you can do with uh, an API. And if you wanna restrict some of these where for some reason you don't want Notion to get users or something like that, if that's screwing up your workflow, you can modify exactly what um, processes each of these connectors has uh, available to it. Now jumping into the cheat sheet, I make a cheat sheet like this for every single video that I create. They're all instantly available to anybody who joins me on Patreon and I walk through everything that I'm going through in this video and a whole lot more in here. But now I wanna get into my tried and true process automation uh, workflow here. And this really comes down to phase one, process documentation, phase two, creating instructions, phase three, iterative improvement. And this is the one I'm really excited to show you today because we can now for the first time ever get these uh, bots to actually improve themselves as they go along. But before we get there, we want to just document our process. If we're going to automate anything, having a clear uh, document of that process is critical. So this this is very easy with AI. You can do it if you have your own you know, process documentation already fleshed out. One process I've been wanting to automate is taking the cheat sheets that I create for each video and turning them into Twitter posts. So I'm gonna grab this prompt from the cheat sheet. This is one that you can optimize for your own process documentation. And I'm just gonna drop this right here into Claude. It says, can you help me create a robust process converting my cheat sheets in my Google Drive, so letting it know, hey, these live in Google Drive, into actionable Twitter posts. I don't want, you know, fluffy stuff. I'd like to use Claude connectors to automate as much as possible. And then I'm telling it, let's leave the Zapier integration out for now because sometimes it'll try to do too much with that Zapier integration. You want to like just keep it inside of this, uh, you know, web portal for these Claude connectors. So let's see what this comes up with. Also, I think it might be good to experiment with either Claude Opus four or this sonnet four. I've had good results with both. Sometimes Claude Opus four 
might overthink some of it where uh, Sonnet 4 may be a little more simple and get to the meat of the matter. So I think it's worth trying both of these out to see what's best for your specific use case. And again, that Sonnet 4 is um, less of the thinking model than this Opus 4, which is really their you know top tier most um, powerful model. So this is really cool. It's already using its connectors here. It's searching for the cheat sheets in my drive. It's grabbing a few of those from the Google Drive. It's found those and it's creating this process. What's really cool is that as it's grabbing all of this, it is also referencing my uh, personal preferences here. So in another video, that I've made that I'll link to in the description. I talk about how to go through and really fill out this with a lot of information. I did that, you know, weeks ago, and it is really paying dividends to put a bunch of information here into your profile because it's packaging all that in to this process in order to ensure that it's filling all of this out, you know, using those preferences so that it really matches what I'm going for without me having to tell it over and over, you know, about my YouTube channel, about me, etc. Here it is actually going ahead and giving some examples of these tweet threads, which is pretty cool. So we can, you know, improve that process here if we don't like this example. All right, so that is Opus 4 for you. Not only did it create the process, but it went out and it created um, a live example. And it's not done. It seems to keep cruising here with just that one initial prompt. So like I said, this Opus 4, sometimes it's too much. You just want to, hey, slow down, man. Uh, let's take this step by step. It starts to really uh, make assumptions that aren't uh, correct. Or if you're working on something really complex, you need that Opus 4, but I really like experimenting between the two different models uh, to you know, maybe have more interaction with it uh, on this, this lower tier Sonnet 4. Okay, now with one prompt, we have documented the heck out of that process. Now, what I wanna do is convert what it has created into instructions that we can use inside of a Claude project. So I'm grabbing this prompt now, and I'm gonna copy this in. This prompt just says, can you convert this process into a set of instructions I can use inside of a Claude project? Make sure to loop the user in for approval slash feedback with each step. So you don't want it going off the rails when it's making these instructions. You wanna keep the human in the loop, keep the user in the loop so it doesn't just take, you know, 20 minutes to create something that's incorrect that you need to do over. This is really cool. It automatically now knows to go look for these BZ numbered documents, which is how I number these cheat sheets. You can see right here, that's the BZ 145. This is my 145th cheat sheet and find documents modified within the last week. So it's looking for the most recent one automatically inside of that Google Drive using that Google Drive connector. And then it works through this process, like I said, asking the user at each step where I've found that it's best to just keep that human in the loop, like I said. Okay, awesome. So now we can take this, copy this. We're going here into our projects. We're gonna create a new project. I'm calling this Cheat Sheets to Twitter Posts V2. Because I already did a V1 when I was preparing for this video. I'm not gonna put much in here. You don't have to. This is just a description for other folks. And now here in these uh, project instructions, we're just gonna drop in those all of those instructions. You might want to clean it up, but it's probably fine. I'm gonna save these instructions. And then now all you need to say is let's begin. And now it's asking me, you know, where do, where do we wanna look for these documents? And I'm telling it, look for these numbered documents modified within the last week. So now we're getting into this testing and refinement stage. And I find that Every time I do a process, I'm always updating it. I'm always figuring out, hey, the AI model could do this a little bit better. Hey, the AI model is always stumbling on this. So that's been one of my major challenges is keeping these instructions up to date with you know, every single time I do it, I wanna make it better. And it's been up until this point, kind of hard to edit those. It's a you know, little bit of a hassle. You just wanna be able to continuously improve. So here's what I'm gonna show you next. This is the really exciting breakthrough that I had while working through this is what I'm gonna do is take these instructions now and I'm gonna drop these right inside of a new page inside of my Notion. This is everything we just went through, but I'm gonna add a step at the bottom here. I'm grabbing this prompt right here with all these bullet points and I'm copying and pasting this right here into my Notion document. You can use a uh, Google Doc for this as well. 
And now I'm gonna grab a link from these instructions because remember, Claude can now update these Notion pages, which is very valuable. So you can always dump things into Notion. You don't need to copy and paste it. You can grab stuff from Notion or your Google Drive. But I'm gonna store these instructions inside of Notion because right now it cannot edit its own instructions, but it can pull in those Notion uh, instructions and update those. So I'm going to delete all of those instructions that we put in here. So here's what these instructions look like now. It just says all of your instructions are here with a link to that page that has all of those instructions. And then it says important, once the session is over, please work with the user to update these instructions based on things that were learned during the recent session. We'll save those. Now let's try this out. When you're hitting Notion, it always asks you for permission, which I think is a good thing. It's found that page. And now we're right back where we were. And what I don't like about this first step is that I always want it to just look for sp these specific numbered documents that were in the last week. So I'm gonna say, let's look for specific BZ numbered documents modified within the last week. Can you update the Notion page to always start this way? So not only are we telling it what we wanna do, but we're saying, hey, we wanna do this for now, from now to forever. First, it's looking for the documents and then it's gonna update the Notion page. And there you have it. It says, I've successfully updated the first part of the instructions and thus improved its own process while you're in the workflow. And there you have it, where before this was asking a choice of how to search, it's automatically doing it that way now. I gotta say, that's pretty exciting to build a tool that can actually automatically update itself. And that matches the theme of this channel perfectly. Blazing, we gotta move fast, we gotta not only build tools, but we gotta keep them up to date as fast as possible. And Zebra, we've got to embrace our own unique abilities. So molding these tools into performing exactly how we want them to perform to get the best results. These are the types of things that can really separate you from just a basic user to a power user. And that was just one Claude connector using that Notion connection, or you could do the same thing inside of Google Docs if that's your preference. The cheat sheet has a ton more information here, including some of the common pitfalls and solutions. So this is not a perfect science Yet. There's a lot of different ways this can go sideways, such as this over-optimization, instructions that are too rigid, ignoring that human in the loop, not giving it enough feedback at the right times, you know, poor documentation, and these connector limitations. I gotta say the connector I was most disappointed in is Canva. This really, I could not get to work at all. So I would say do not waste any time messing with that Canva connector. It did basically nothing. I wish I had all those hours of my life back. The Gmail one can be very useful, although sometimes it can over summarize things. So you might want to watch out for that. Again, this notion accessing your you know knowledge base in various ways is super helpful. And I'm really excited to experiment more with these desktop extensions. So if you work a lot with PDFs, or allowing it to control your Mac, allowing it to handle Spotify. And there is a ton more in the cheat sheet. One thing I want to leave you with here is this delegation framework. As you know, I'm a fan of Tim Ferriss and he talks about this two hour work week experiment. So um, imagine if you could only work two hours per week on your business, what would you focus on? Now that you have these Claude connectors, you can get a ton more out of those two hours than you could when he first you know, threw this challenge out there. So if this is something interesting to you, make sure to check out the Patreon, grab this cheat sheet, grab over 140, 145 other cheat sheets instantly available to anybody who joins, to anybody that supports this channel. But I wanna throw at you another concept of this context engineering also inside of Claude. I've got a video all about that right here. That's the next step. Check that out. I'll see you over there. Make your dreams come true.